raise hand function ask questions coach it's all yours i'm just waiting to see if any of them turn on their screens or if i'm the only one that, that had to get up put makeup on this morning so okay good now there we go there we go all right look like uh, students in a classroom trying to, to trick their professor so uh good morning excited to be uh going to a bowl game obviously as you tell behind us you know our goal starts with wanting to win the sec east and we fell short of that but the next goal is a bowl game uh and how we uh, do that is as important as as being associated with the bowl game and so for us at two and four in the bye week um really the rallying cry for our team was to let's get to a bowl game and we knew we had to play our best football down the stretch in order to do that you know we didn't think at two and four we were that bad of a football team we understood that we'd lost the last three by one possession or less. Um, and so we just needed to clean up the little things and continue to work together and, and uh, improve. And I felt like we really obviously beat a top 25 team on the road um, and, um, and you know, obviously finished capped off uh, by winning the two trophy games in, in our, uh, uh, on our schedule. And so really proud of this team for, for uh, finishing the way that they did in order to go to a bowl game. You know, very excited about the Gasparilla Bowl. Uh, you know, very appreciative to the SEC as they see fit in, in where they uh, place programs. You know, when you think about a bowl game, think first about uh, uh, the location. Uh, I think it was uh, 81 degrees yesterday in Tampa, so that was pretty exciting. Um, the second thing you think about is your, is, uh, your matchup, obviously playing an ACC opponent um, and have a ton of respect for Dave Clawson and Wake Forest and the job that he's done there. They've got one of the best quarterbacks in college football and Sam Hartman. So uh, that will be a tremendous challenge and, and allow our team to have this focus for the bowl game. And then the last thing is the date. Um, and so, you know, it's an awesome opportunity for our guys to play in the bowl game uh, before Christmas uh, and be able to get home uh, and, and spend the holidays with their family, obviously, and the Friday game uh, uh, after Thanksgiving. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a strain on our players to miss uh, the holidays with their families. And so this is an awesome thing for them to be able to get the bowl game. Now for our staff, boy, it's, uh, it, it's, it's something. Yesterday we had our first bowl practice last night. We were in three in-home visits. Uh, this morning I'll be flying down to Houston, uh, be in uh, Arizona and Las Vegas tomorrow night for Coach Pinkle's induction. Uh, we'll be in Seattle uh, Wednesday. Um, St. Louis on Thursday, we will have bowl practice and official visits uh, and a basketball game on Saturday. So uh, it's a busy time of year, um, but man, we are so thankful to be playing in a, in a, in a great bowl game and, and uh, look forward to it. So with that, I'll open it up with anybody that wants to ask me, you know, great questions about uh, uh, reports from uh, Twitterverse. Uh, that are related to a guy having a bowl projection. Um, so if that's what we're going to talk about here, let's get those bowl projections out of the way early. All uh, right, use the raised hand function for questions. Uh, Gabe, you want to lead us off? Yeah, sure. I'll go ahead and uh, fill the role that, that you want somebody to fill, Eli. Uh, first of all, I mean, can you tell us at all kind of what, uh, I, I know you guys get to submit some sort of preference or, or where you wanted to go for a bowl game, what that process looked like for you guys. And then, yeah, what's your, what's your response to the idea you, you didn't want to play Kansas? Yeah. I, you know, I realized that bowl selection process is different from conference to conference. And if you haven't been in a bowl game in, I don't know, 12, 15 years, maybe that thing's changed for you. And so maybe that the way that's done at other places is different. Um, we submit preferences uh, to the to the uh, uh, conference uh, um, based on a lot of different factors. Um, what's best for our university? What's best for our fan base? What's best for our student athletes? Uh, and we don't really factor anybody else in that. Um, we, we factor what's best for our fan base, uh, what's best for our student athletes, and what's best for our athletic department. And you know, uh, we take any bowl game that they'll give us. And um, and whatever matchup they give us, they give us. You know, last year we got uh, the uh, Armed Forces Bowl, and uh, you know this year we get the Gasparilla Bowl. 
And if I got to pick, I'd have picked the national championship. But that's not how it works. So, you know, all the Twitter hate and, and calling us out and fans getting up in an uproar, we'll figure that out uh, when the game is scheduled at Faroe Field. Uh, and I believe that's uh, September, uh, Ryan, I think it's 6th, uh, 2025. Correct, sir. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see then. But until then, I can keep getting all the Twitter hate they want people from Kansas want to put on there. But don't phase me. Any. We'll see you on Fro Field. Buy your tickets early. We'll go to Clint Switzer next. Clint, you're on mute, buddy. It's a good question, though. Rookie mistake. Uh, Coach, you had your first bow practice yesterday, obviously. Uh, kind of getting a sense of what the transfer portal is starting to look like here. Do you, do you have a pretty good indication of what the, your roster is going to look like for uh, December 23rd right now? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, we've had two, four, six. Uh, we've had seven guys enter the transfer portal, not including walk-ons. Um, you know, two of them were seniors. Uh, uh, obviously, the rest are guys who, you know, fulfilled roles on our team. Um, biggest concern for me right now is probably our, our guys who are going to not play because of the you know, their potential future in the NFL. And so, uh, you know, as of right now, Martez and, and Isaiah McGuire are the only ones that have addressed that situation. We'll figure out the rest as we move forward. Um, but, you know, everybody else was at practice yesterday and ready to go. And, and so I don't anticipate. Now, again, I didn't anticipate Scott was going to go to Cincinnati this morning either. So. There's always room for change in college football, but as of right now, I feel pretty good about uh, where we're at and who's going to play in the game. Dave Matter. Hey, Eli, back to the, the Bulls. Um, this is the second year you guys weren't in that SEC pool of six. Is there any frustration there that Missouri was a team that was kind of left out of that, or does this match up better with your preferences, or how does that square with you? Yeah, you know, really, I don't, I don't even know. Uh, I mean, I get that there's an SEC six and all that, but it, it doesn't phase me. I mean, we 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 get the bowl game. Obviously, again, my goal is to be uh, playing on a, a New Year's six game or in the playoff, and so after that, it's any bowl game that we get is a great opportunity for us to continue to uh, finish our season in the postseason, which is what you're trying to qualify for. Uh, opportunity to continue to develop our team for the future uh, and to put in the, you know, let our, our, our team finish this season um, the very best way possible. So again, yeah, whether or not it's uh, SEC six or, or whatever, it doesn't matter to me, man, this is a bowl games are all about how the people treat you when you're there. And man, last year, I thought uh, 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 Fort Worth did an excellent job. And, um, you know, I've been to bowl games in Mobile. I've been to bowl games in, in San Diego. And, and uh, you know, bowl games are what you make out of it, how much uh, gratitude and positivity you have. And, again, it's going to be a tremendous matchup. It's going to be in Tampa. It's one of my favorite places. I'd recommend everybody go to Ybor City and go to the Colombian restaurant. It's tremendous. If you got a little extra time, drive over to Clearwater. There's a Colombian restaurant on the water. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty excited about going to Tampa, to be honest. Gerard Hamilton. Coach, do you have any injury updates on Barrett Bannister, Joe Charleston, EJ, and Tyrone Hopper? Are they trending towards uh, being able to play? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, EJ uh, had surgery, and he will be out um, until hopefully we get him back for spring football, but he will be unavailable for the bowl game. Uh, Ty Tyrone Hopper was at practice yesterday, and uh, we anticipate having him back um, for the bowl game. Joseph Charleston was at practice yesterday. We anticipate having him back uh, for the bowl game, and Barrett Bannister is working his butt off uh, to get back, and uh, um, obviously uh, playing on the 23rd is, is, a, is a good deal for him. Um, you know, he'll have another two weeks to really get healed up, and don't know if he'll be full speed, but uh, – I anticipate he gets the opportunity to play. Matt Stahl. Uh, Eli, I know you had mentioned earlier in the year there was a possibility of Chance Looper getting back for the bowl game. Is that still possible at all? 
Um, it is not. He has not been fully cleared for contact, and um, he has been able to continue to rehab and get going um, and, and get a little bit more involved with workouts and stuff. But um, from a medical standpoint, you know, in order to qualify for a medical red shirt, you're not able to participate in any type of football activities. And so in his best interest, it's best to, to not participate in the bowl game. Essex there. Coach, what kind of challenge does Wake Forest offense, the slow mesh offense, and, and Sam Hartman present for your team? Yeah, you know, it's uh, I've been uh, tasked with going against Dave and Warren uh, Rosario several times when I was at NC State. So I've seen this offense up close and personal, and they do a tremendous job of uh, using the RPO. Uh, making sure you're a uh, tight fit in your run game um, and playing to their players' strengths. So it'll be a great challenge, Dave. Football teams are always well coached. They don't beat themselves. They don't turn the football over. Um, they're very much uh, uh, um, attacking on the defensive side of the ball, but do not give up big plays. Um, keep everything in front of them. You got to really work to sustain drives. So it'll be a real challenge. And, uh, you know, I, the only matchup that we have that's a cross comparison this year is that they, they took it to Vanderbilt pretty good early in the season. And so we'll have to watch that game. Um, obviously, Sam uh, is a tremendous player who's played a long time. And, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see what, they, what they're going to have for the bowl game, too, as, as we've heard different things about whether or not they've got players transferring. So... It'll be interesting to see what the matchup is when the matchup takes place. Gabe DeArmond. Eli, there was a time when when it was a big deal for programs to have their fans turn out at, at bowl games and, and show up and, and attend the game. I don't know if that's true or not anymore. First of all, do you think it is? And second, like in this era where a lot of players are opting out and fans kind of question the importance some people put on bowl games, you know, what's your message to your fans that, that they should put that importance on it? Yeah, I love our fan base. Um, and I would just say this is an opportunity for us to support the University of Missouri and our football program. And you get to do it in a great location of Tampa. Um, and so why not combine a little bit of a Christmas holidays, uh, 80 degree weather, um, and get to go to a, a NFL stadium and participate. I think Gabe, anything you do represents everything you do. And so whether or not we're in uh, the, the, the Gasparilla Bowl or any other bowl game, our fan base showing out is a great sign to our football team and future recruits of the support that they're going to have while they're here. And I thought last year uh, we had a tremendous showing um, at the Armed Forces Bowl. And I, I'll, I, I really um, – respected the way that when we walked out of that hotel to go to that game, uh, the Tiger fan base was standing in that hotel cheering us on. And that's something that, that's always stuck out to me is, is when you get off the bus, whether it's in an away game um, or at Tiger Walk, what's the fan base there? Uh, do they show up and, and, and uh, are they cheering you on? And, you know, we hosted the, the, the state championships here um, this weekend and, and there's nothing like seeing those those vans from those hometowns uh, in Missouri that, are, that have the flags out and say state now. You know, you get out what you put in. And so, Gabe, I would say, yes, it's important to show up to a bowl game. It's important to be engaged. It's important to support the black and gold. It's important to sh support the Tigers. Um, and, man, I don't know about you all, but to be able to go to the city of Tampa for a bowl game, that, that's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal. Callum McAndrew, the devices. I can help you out. Like I said, you know where we're staying. There's a trolley that gets you around to a lot of different places downtown, and again, the Ebor City, which I I, I think is tremendous. Um, they have a lot, a couple of really nice cigar shops. I don't know if anybody's into that sort of thing, but I got some. I got plenty of ideas for everybody. Callum, hey, like 
Um, how important are the, you know, the ex- as you're trying to build a roster, the extra practices that come with getting securing this bowl game and facing a, an opponent that you might not see again in, in some, quite some time? Yeah, I mean, I think any time as a program you get a chance to compete, like I told our guys yesterday, every day is a, is a challenge for you to set the standard of what you want to be. Um, and the standard for us is is we want to go be a bowl champion. And, um, you know, so for us, how we go practice yesterday really kind of determines who we're going to be as a team moving forward and what's the standard that we have. So, uh, again, the extra bowl practices are an opportunity to improve. and. Uh, that's important for everybody, not just uh, the the players. It's important for our coaches. Did they go out there yesterday and work to improve at coaching their craft? So everybody in our organization has an opportunity to improve over the course of these next, I think we're going to get uh, 14 practices in. And so I'm looking for everybody, myself included, to, to accept that challenge and set their standard of performance. Um, so that's the approach we're taking. And as far as an opponent we won't play again, like, that don't matter. It don't matter who you play, where you play. Um, if there's a trophy on the line and as a competitor you're, you're playing, you're writing your own story. Uh, you're writing the story of who you are as a player and you're writing the story of this university and, and who we are as a team. And so, again, take the opponent and the scoreboard off of it. What do you want those people to think about? What do you want the people of Tampa who do show up and, and, and pay their hard-earned earn money to come watch you play? Um, it's the same story that I told him about Lou Gehrig. Um, what, what do you want that fan to say, whether he shows up day one that you're playing or day, you know, or streak 4,000 when you're playing? What, what do you want him to say about you? Ben Conroy. Coach, this is the first time that Wake Forest of Missouri will be meeting. Um, obviously, it's early on in the process, but what are some of the things that stand out to you about this team and this matchup? All right. Well, um, again, Dave Clawson does a tremendous job. I've gone against him and, and Warren uh, several times. Uh, Sam Hartman's one of the premier quarterbacks in the country. They have a unique style offense that's based heavily on RPOs. Um, they do a really good job of throwing the ball vertically down the field. Um, you know, defensively, uh, they are attacking, but they're going to keep the ball in front of them, make you earn everything. Um, they're very sound. They don't beat themselves. Um, you know, I haven't got into specifics on who they have as players. I do know they have two very talented corners. You know, they have a very talented wide receiver. And again, they have one of the premier corners or quarterbacks in all of college football. Ben Arnett. Eli, I think you've talked before in the last few weeks about just kind of how busy this time of year has become in, in college football with everything that's going on. Or is, is the practice field this month going to be – particularly key for for you and maybe the other coaches to kind of get back to what you do and and sort of be the foundation for you? Well, Ben, to be honest, the, everything we do is what we do. You know, um, practicing and coaching is part of what we do, but um, recruiting is part of what we do. Um, player development, meeting with our guys individually outside of the football is what we do. Meeting with parents is what we do. So honestly, it's just all part of the job. I think we all started the job because of how much we enjoyed um, the on the field stuff, but we've learned to grow and develop into to embracing all of it. And, uh, you know, you got to love all of it. You got to love recruiting. You got to love the transfer portal. You got to love balancing your roster. You got to love balancing your time. You got to love uh, official visits. You got to love getting on the grass. You got to love the challenge of going to uh, a bowl game and, and, and playing a very good opponent a couple of days before Christmas. So, uh, all of it's going to be a challenge, and and uh, you got to love all of it. Dave Matter, Eli, are there any p- position groups specifically that are going to be short-handed over the next few weeks? That I don't know. Maybe you're looking at some younger guys that can have some opportunities because of the opt-outs or or transfers. Yeah, I think the safety position is going to be one. Um, you know, the other thing that you got to battle in these games is the four-game redshirt rule and and uh Demorian Wayne has played in four games um and, and so is DJ Westerlock so those guys would be unavailable for the bowl game um you know and so that's going to give guys like Isaac Thompson and Tyler Hibbler and Tyler Jones um more opportunities at the safety position in this game and that's a position that's probably the most hard hit you know obviously we've 
uh, have sub are going to submit a waiver to the NCAA uh, about player safety in regards to seeing if we could get, uh, you know, this bowl game not to count towards the four-game redshirt rule. I'm not hopeful that that would occur, but um, it is something that we're going to do in order to try to help ourselves. J.B. Ricks. Hey, Coach. J.B. Ricks here from Spectrum News One out of North Carolina. Um, I wasn't planning on asking any questions. I just kind of wanted to get your feedback on your thoughts on Wake Forest and your opponent in the next bowl game. But some breaking news just came down in regards to uh, NC State quarterback Devin Leary just announcing that he will be uh, entering the transfer portal. And uh, we all know how much you played a role in his development at NC State and him becoming, you know, one of the top quarterbacks in the ACC. Uh, Two-part question is, is as far as what are your thoughts about Leary and, uh, you know, maybe the mayhem that may take place for those schools out there that will try to go after him? And um, second part would be your thoughts on the transfer portal in general and just how it's expanding and how it's just becoming coming more of a frenzy every year as we continue to get deeper into this uh, part of the college football schedule. Well, I, I'm uh, a little bit taken back by the news that you just broke, JB. So that's that's good. Um, I I honestly don't know the rules. I don't know if there's a, like an NFL tampering and you can't comment specifically on anybody in the portal. And I'm going to err on the side that that's probably the rule. Um, but I do have great respect for. Uh, uh, well, I probably can't comment. Like I said. Um, I would just say that the uh, portals is becoming very interesting um, because, um, you know, I was once a little bit afraid of what it what it was and maybe what it becomes. But now, I mean, if you want me to be real, there's a thing called supply and demand. And when supply is high, demand is low. And if you look at supply and demand in the portal right now, there's a whole heck of a lot of really good players in the portal. And you have an opportunity as a coach to really improve your roster in a hurry and to figure out maybe some weaknesses. And I think you got to balance with, okay, I know this guy's going to be a developmental player, so I don't want to run him off by taking somebody and let's get, let him grow and develop. Or, hey, you know what? This this position just didn't pan out the way we thought it was going to pan out. And, you know, we need to go get some guys. I think if you look at what we were able to accomplish last year in the portal uh, with adding depth to our defensive end room, quality depth, uh, solid contributors, to really remake our defensive tackle room um, and to improve our defense the way that we did, that, that'll that be the the approach that we take in the portal. Um, it's very much going to be about who are the guys that fit us, um, who are the guys that we believe can have an impact on our culture. Um, and so, um, you know, again, how everybody else approaches the portal is up to them. For us, it's an opportunity to improve our program and our university and our team. And uh, I think, it, you know, for the student athletes, they obviously need to be very careful about uh, why they want to get in it and make sure that they're, they're covered. There is a lot of those guys that, that don't necessarily get plucked out of the portal. And again, supply and demand. When supply is high, demand is low. And uh, there's going to be a lot of players in that portal. Thank you, Coach. Good seeing you again. You too, JB. I'll see you in Tampa, man. Got time for one more question. We'll take it from Jack Sobel with the Missourian. Oh, we can answer both. They got up at 8 a.m., Ryan. We'll answer both. Cam, you I got, got it, sir. You got it. Hi. M morning, Eli. I, I, I know a, a, I think last week or a couple weeks ago you said uh, you expected the transfer portal to be like a madhouse. I mean, with, with, yeah. with the with the stuff from this week, uh, has it been about, it, about what you expected more or less? Anything like that? You know, we went into the portal. Uh, we kind of targeted what we figured were going to be the guys that were going to leave. We 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 kind of targeted. We thought we had maybe uh, twelve to fourteen, and uh, we came in um, four short of that so far. And so um, I'm, I'm I'm very pleased uh, with the guys who have chosen to stay and want to continue to work. And and you know I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that we'll have some guys after the bowl game. I think people want to stay and and finish what they've started. And I truly respect that. Um, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for us to get a few more guys. Um, 
maybe to find a different opportunity or see what their role is and, and decide that they want to do something different after the bowl game. Um, but for us, you know, it's been about what we expected, to be honest, from top to bottom. We kind of expected these things. Take our last question from Cam Lemons, Debro. If I pronounced your name wrong, I apologize. Got it right. Thank you. No one usually does. Um, Coach, thanks for taking the question. Uh, you know, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier with the calendar, whether it's there's National Signing Day on the 21st, the bowl games on the 23rd. Just really how much of a strain is this really this calendar? You have to going in home with transfer portal guys, with high schoolers. How much of the strain is it really getting all these bowl practices in? And would you like to see something really kind of be changed with the calendar and make it a little more breathable for coaches when you're already having to recruit your roster over and over, recruit guys from the portal, recruit guys from high school, et cetera? Look, I don't think anybody wants to hear me complain. It's the job. I signed up for it. I, I tell you what, I signed that contract extension as fast as I possibly could. So it is what it is. I signed up for it um, and our staff signed up for it. So, you know, honestly, there's really no reason to complain about it. Uh, everybody's got tough jobs. Y'all got tough jobs. We got tough jobs. Um, but, you know, you find um, excitement and satisfaction in attacking these jobs and attacking the opportunity. And this is an opportunity for us, whether we're recruiting um, or whether we're, we're recruiting guys out of the transfer portal for us to improve our roster, which improves the product for the University of Missouri. Uh, and again, we have an opportunity to play this game one more time at the University of Missouri with this team um, that's going to be uniquely uh, put together one more time. And so I, I love the challenge and I'm honestly excited about it. Uh, no matter what I say on here, it's, that's not going to change anything. So instead of honestly complaining about it or, or creating and giving that space, I'm focused on the positives and the excitement that, that I have about, again, playing in a bowl game, getting to be around recruits, getting to coach uh, bowl practice. You know, there's a lot of teams that they're, they cleaned up their equipment this past week. They put all their stuff away. They're, they're making plans to be gone for – for six weeks from their place. That, that's not what we're doing. And it took a lot of guts and a lot of courage uh, to stay together and to believe and fight to get it to where we're at. Uh, and it, I mean, credit took the last play of the game versus Arkansas to get it done. And, and uh, so I'm excited about the whole thing. Thank you, coach. Appreciate everyone spending a few minutes with us this morning. All right, let's go beat Kansas this weekend in basketball. You got it, Dennis. Am I